Hey guys, and welcome to today's idiot video. Today we are going to be covering a video posted by YouTube user Karen B titled How the Sun Sets on a Flat Earth, which I find ironic because a setting sun is one that goes below the horizon from the perspective of an observer, and if the earth is flat, then there would never be a setting sun as the sun would never go below the horizon. I'm sure she is going to come up with some nonsensical ad hoc explanation that magically makes objects several thousand kilometers in elevation vanish below eye level. But Karen B is a flat earther, and as you all know, all flat earthers are fucking idiots. Before we start, I would like to say thank you to all my patrons and channel members whose support helps me to continue to produce videos like these. So let's begin. Hi everyone, this is Karen B. And in this video, I will do my best to give you the most comprehensive explanation of how the sun sets and rises on a flat earth. Well, I'm sure you're going to do your best, but I highly doubt that your explanation will be comprehensive enough to fill all the holes that the flat earth model has in regards to just sunrises and sunsets. Early on in the flat earth community, the most common answer to this question was simply perspective. While this does play a part in how day and night work on Flat Earth, it's not the only thing at play. Well, there's your first problem. The only role that perspective plays is to debunk the Flat Earth explanation of sunrises, sunsets, and distance to the sun. If the sun and moon were much closer to the Earth, then their angular size change throughout the day would vary wildly, being at its smallest at sunrise and sunset, and largest at solar noon. Unfortunately for flat earth idiots, the angular size of the sun and moon remain the same from sunrise to sunset. There are a few different things working together in harmony to create day and night on our plane. First, on a flat earth, the sun is small and close. A local light about the same size as the moon. And you're an idiot. Because the small and close sun and moon have more than just a lack of angular size change problem. A small and close sun and moon would have different portions of its surface facing different directions. On Earth, we observe the same face no matter where we are on the planet. This by itself means that they are far away. Solar eclipses also present a problem as our umbra penumbra configuration can only be created by an extremely large sun that's much further away and a smaller moon that's much closer than the sun. There are so many problems I could bring up regarding a small and local sun and moon, but at this point we will stop here. So let's continue. Most people first picture Earth as a disk in space with a large sun far away. Don't mix models. <laughs> we don't believe the Earth is a disk floating in space. Excuse me, but how can we mix flat Earth models when the flat Earth has no model to begin with? And while Flat Earthers want to discount the Flat Earth Society's model that has the Flat Earth disk accelerating up through space at a constant 9.8 meters per second squared, it happens to be the only Flat Earth model that takes into account the observational acceleration that all objects experience when dropped. Now I still think the Flat Earth Society members are a bunch of idiots, but at least they're not denying gravity's necessity to explain observational reality. To understand, you need to forget about space as it has been described to you. The Earth is a plane with the luminaries within our Atmo plane and our small local lights. Oh, okay, great. So to understand how the flat Earth sun is even possible, we must deny reality, deny our logical reasoning, and make up dumbass words like Atmo plane? Oh yeah, don't forget to forget about how light propagates as well and accept the fact that the sun has magical properties to make all of its light end in a straight line on the equinoxes. You can't comprehensively explain this because the earth is not flat, there's nothing special about the sun as a light source, and Karen B, you're an idiot. So, first, let's examine perspective. Perspective is the representation of how an image is seen by the eye. It's about how the angle and distance of a three-dimensional object is represented on a flat surface. Man, you were so close to nailing that until you had to throw in that flat surface nonsense. Perspective is the mathematical explanation of how the angular size of an object will shrink or grow uniformly as it gets further or closer to an observer. 
Perspective, however, does not need a flat surface to describe how the angular size changes. For instance, if you threw a baseball straight up in the air, it will still have the same angular size change as if you threw the ball in the same direction but horizontally. Here we have our two horizontal planes with a perspective grid over it. You can see the trees rise up toward the horizon and get smaller in size and the clouds appear to get lower in the sky as they appear to converge into the vanishing point. The clouds seem to drop toward the ground in the distance, yet we know that the clouds are still thousands of feet above the Earth's surface. The same thing with the sun. No, not the same thing as the sun. The clouds, trees, and everything except the sun and moon get smaller as they approach the vanishing point. This is because the distance to the clouds and the trees are a relatively short distance away, whereas the sun and moon are at a great distance from the Earth. Therefore, they don't change in angular size throughout the day. And this is observational. It is always high above the Earth's surface, but seems to touch the ground as it reaches a distance outside the limits of our optics. Karen B, you are an idiot. In your own video, you literally show the sun not touching the horizon, but disappearing behind the horizon, all while not having any angular size change. If perspective was the explanation for why we have sunsets, then the sun would just get smaller and smaller until it became just a point of light above the horizon. So here, we have our observer on the left looking off as far as he can see. When you, as an observer, stand looking as far as you can see toward the horizon, the sky plane and the plane of the ground you stand on appear to converge at the end of your eyesight in the distance at the vanishing point. If this were the case, then at the moment of sunset, you should be able to pull out a telescope and bring the sun back into full view. Unless, I don't know, the Earth isn't flat, and it's a globe that spins, and as it spins, it puts an observer in a position that to see the sun, you would have to look through the Earth. I'd also like to point out the deception in this image. As the sun gets further away, the difference in viewing angle from an observation point should get smaller and smaller, as you can see it does on the left side of the diagram. But for some reason, the diagram stops having the difference in angles reduce, but they begin to increase so that the sun appears to touch the horizon. In reality, even if the Earth was flat, the sun wouldn't get far enough away from an observer to touch the horizon due to perspective. But no one has ever accused flat earthers of being honest, because flat earthers are fucking idiots. The next thing that causes the sun to set and rise is our atmosphere, or atmo plane, as I like to call it, since we live on a plane, not a sphere. Making up nonsensical words makes your explanation less comprehensive, not more comprehensive. Flat Earth idiots already struggle with very basic science concepts, and words like atmoplane will only serve to confuse them more. Moving forward, every time she uses the word atmoplane, I'm dinging her for being an idiot. This is a clip from a video made by my good friends Zach and Steve. In this animation, Steve rendered the stars over Flat Earth. The top is rendered with the atmoplane, and the bottom is rendered without showing how perspective alone does not explain how the luminaries appear to go below the horizon. Now that animation is fine and dandy, but it only accounts for one observer. To skew the model so that it matches one observer's reality is easy. Adding a second observer and making the model match both observational realities is harder, and adding a third observer is even harder. Now try having 7 billion observers and making sure that the atmosphere takes into account all those observations. I guarantee that you can't do it. The globe earth model needs no special pleading. By simply making the earth a globe, making it huge and having it spin and orbit a much larger sun, all 7 billion problems are solved. How does the atmoplane make the sun and other luminaries appear to set below the horizon? The water vapor in the air acts like a lens. This is called atmospheric lensing in mainstream science and is explained here. No, atmospheric lensing does not account for all observers seeing a sunrise and set from below the horizon. Now this might be possible for viewers in the same general area under the same extreme atmospheric conditions. 
However, this explanation requires the atmosphere to always be constructed in a manner that is consistent with observational reality across the planet. For instance, how is the atmosphere constructed so that on the equinox people at the southern tip of South America are able to see the same sunrise and sunset as the people in the northern part of North America? The northern part of North America would be much closer to the subsolar point on a flat earth model than the southern part of South America. So for these observations to be consistent with each other, the atmosphere must refract the light heading towards North America more than the light heading towards South America. And at the at the same time, it must have enough atmospheric lensing to increase the angular size of the sun so that it is exactly the same as the angular size of the sun when observed in North America. Or the other possibility is the earth isn't flat. It's a globe that spins and orbits the sun and all observers along the terminator line are essentially equidistant to that sun and the sun's angular size for everyone is the same. Why do flat earthers insist on a model that has no consistency to it when there is such a beautiful globe earth model that's completely consistent with reality and has absolutely no need for special pleading? Maybe because flat earthers are fucking idiots. The science is the same of that of a lens. Here's a simple example. So if you're looking at at uh, Chicago here, just maybe you can, now you can just see the top of, uh, of the Sears Tower and if our simulated uh, temperature inversion moves into place. Hopefully now you can see all of, pretty much all of yeah, Chicago, see all the lower buildings. including including what's at ground level. So the atmosphere really is like acting like a lens. Yes. So not only does the water eventually obstruct the light, but all the billions of tiny water droplets behave like a lens. No, Karen B, that is not what he said. What he said was that the temperature inversion of the atmosphere causes a lensing effect. This wouldn't account for objects that are thousands of kilometers in elevation appearing to drop below the horizon. Not to mention that this same refraction must have less of an effect for observers that are further away. And this must be consistent day to day regardless of actual atmospheric conditions. Karen B, I think it's time for you to accept the fact that the earth is not flat, you don't know what you're talking about, and you are an idiot. You can emulate this with a lens and a light source like I do here. This candle will take the place of the sun. Watch as I slowly move it back in a straight line and also it stays at the same height since I have it placed on this mason jar. The atmoplane and your vision create what we call a personal atmoplanic dome or personal atmospheric dome if you please. Surprise, surprise, you're wrong again as the atmosphere would be responsible for everyone equidistant from the sun to all experience a sunset or sunrise because of refraction and lensing, and anyone who is at a different distance will disagree. Let me explain. If observer A is X kilometers from the subsolar point and is observing a sunrise due to atmospheric refraction and lensing, then any observer that is X kilometers away will also be seeing the sun on the horizon, due to the same amount of refraction and lensing. Therefore, on the terminator line, only two observation points would agree on the position of the sun on the horizon during the equinoxes, and everyone else along the terminator line would disagree. The sun would be above the horizon for those who are closer to the sun, and the sun would be below the horizon for those who are further away from the sun. This is just more evidence to suggest that flat earth idiots either don't or can't use their logical deduction and reasoning when discussing the shape of the Earth. Which is the shape of the lens dictated by our eyesight. What in the actual fuck is wrong with flat earthers? Karen B has literally been blaming the refraction and lensing on the atmosphere the entire video, but then turns around and says the shape and refraction of the lens is dictated by our eyesight? It is the atmosphere that is responsible for the refraction and lensing, and Karen B is an idiot. This simulator, ironically made by a globe earth believer, shows how this works. It's not perfect, but it certainly is close. This is the third time that I have seen a flat earther promote this video as a somewhat accurate representation of the flat earth model. This simulator was made by a globe earther to show how impossible the flat earth is. So flat earth idiots like Patrick Shank, Nathan Thompson, 
and now Karen B have all missed the point of that video and have pushed it as evidence for a flat earth. I'll try to find the original link for you and post it in the description. Okay, I want to go back to my sunrise video and take a look at how light reflects off of a flat surface. I went to this online tool that lets you create different simulations of a light source and a reflective surface. And this is simulating the sun over flat water. The light is radiating from the center of the source out in all directions. Look at how the light rays bounce off the reflective surface and off to the distance at an acute angle. So here's our observer again, and you can see the reflected ray reaches our observer before the source does. What Karen B just said was really fucking stupid. A reflected ray must take longer to travel from source to observation than a direct ray of light because the shortest distance between any two points is a straight line, and a reflected ray does not follow a straight line between the two points. Karen B, you're an idiot. Watch in this video how the sun's reflection begins to come into view and it's not round, it's squashed because it's reflecting at a sharp angle. I have no idea how to even address this. The stupidity of this idiot is beyond the lower limits of my comprehension. Again, how is it possible to see the reflection of the sun off the water without actually seeing the sun in the sky? As far as I can tell in this video, the sun begins to emerge from the horizon and the first thing you see is the top of it. There's a line here where the angle of the view is so sharp, the water becomes a mirror and it's reflecting the sky. So when the sun approaches you and gets close enough for your eye to see it, the disk appears to rise up from the reflection because visually, it is now within the limits of your eyesight. Karen B, what you are seeing is the refraction and lensing from the atmosphere right next to the water. This portion of the atmosphere is going to have the highest amount of refraction and lensing, and since the sunrise and sunsets occur at the horizon for the first and last few moments of the day, the sun may appear to be slightly stretched. But we can say for sure that what we are looking at is not a reflection of the sky, you idiot. As the sun moves closer, you see the reflection remain below the disk for a short time, and then it's gone. This can only happen on a flat surface. This image is exactly what I was talking about. There is no reflection of the sun on the ocean. What you are seeing is a combination of refraction and lensing that is resulting in a small mirage when the sun appears to lift off from the horizon. How can we tell that this is not a reflection? Well, if we pull up our last image, you can see that there is no image mirroring going on, just some stretching. What Karen B is seeing is a mirage. Okay, well, I think this is where we are going to end the video today. It's quite obvious that Karen B's comprehensive explanation of a flatter sunrise and sunset was anything but comprehensive. Not surprising though, Karen B's an idiot, and her video was meant to educate flat earthers who are also fucking idiots. Now I'd like to take the time out to thank Karen B for putting out a video filled with so much stupidity that even a monkey would agree that you're a fucking idiot. Thanks for sticking around until the end. Be sure to head over to our new channel, Science or Satire, where Fight the Flat Earth and I will be doing live streams addressing science and pseudoscience in a satirical manner. Thank you again to all of my patrons and channel members, and if you would like to support the channel, check the links in the description for different options. I'm Father Skeptic, and I'm out.